scope of our tests. It's April the 9th, 1969, and Concorde 002 is ready for her maiden flight from BAC's airfield at Filton. As in Concorde 001, no passenger seats, but 12 tons of flight test equipment. Today, the six-man crew was led by Brian Trubshaw, director and general manager, flight operations, BAC Filton, together with his co-pilot, John Cochrane. Of thousands of people concerned with the production of 002, few have awaited this moment more eagerly than those whose job it is to finally prove the aircraft in the air, the flight test crew. The great day was interesting, to put it mildly. I'm very excited because we'd had two days of frustration with the failure flag on the um, first pilot's airspeed in the popping up every time we did a taxi run up above uh, 80 knots. And after about the third go to fix it, I said to the, the engineers and the designers, well, if it works this time, we'll, we'll go. We're not going to come back and tell you it's working. Unfortunately, it was, and off we went. Uh, Concord 002 is clear takeoff, and good luck, gentlemen. Fingers crossed. He roule, the croissant est noir. Full power and reheat. At this point, Brian Trubshaw decided to turn a high speed taxi run into a first flight. Ah. Oh. Ah. So obviously the ASI is all right. Understand what we control. Zero two, you're clear to land from this approach. Well, on an airplane where the pilot's eyes are um, very high off the ground when you when the main wheels touch, you need to uh, be aware of the height uh, quite accurately, and you use radio altimeters for the last, say, hundred feet or so. Uh, and they're called out either by the co-pilot or the flight engineer, in the case of the Concorde. And we were denied their, their accurate information on our first flight because they both failed during the flight from Filton to Fairford. It wasn't too bad. I think we, I think we arrived about a quarter of a second early. After a 22-minute flight, Concorde 002 landed safely at the Royal Air Force Airfield at Fairford in Gloucestershire the British base for Concorde flight operations. After years of careful study and dedicated attention to detail, here was another thrilling and rewarding climax for the thousands of men and women working in the factories of British Aircraft Corporation and Sud Aviation, in the knowledge that the British-built Concorde flew just five weeks after her sister 001, and that two Concords are now flying. Brian Trapshaw said the flight was cool, calm and collected and that the crew enjoyed it immensely.